Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're at Cedars sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Pedro Caterino, who is the director of aortic surgery. Dr. Caterino, it is great to see you and thanks so much for being with me today. Uh, thank you for coming to talk to me, Adam. It's nice to meet you finally. Yeah, and so let's talk, Dr. Caterino, about a very important disease, which is aortic regurgitation. Can you explain to all the patients in our community what is aortic regurgitation? Certainly. Uh, so aortic regurgitation is really a fancy way of saying that you have an, a leaky aortic valve. Uh, the aortic valve is the valve between the main pumping chamber of the heart and your aorta. The aorta is the blood vessel that takes blood all over your body. You know, the aortic valve, when it closes, it's responsible for that lower number on your blood pressure. You know, so you, you may check your blood pressure at home, you get the top number, which is when the heart beats forward, say it's 120 or something like that. And then you get the bottom number. The bottom number is a bit lower. It's where when the heart relaxes and it doesn't relax down to zero because of the aortic valve. The aortic valve keeps your blood pressure up. Um, so if it wasn't there, you know, that lower number would be very much lower than say 80, which is what the textbooks say it should be. And the aortic valve is a semi-lunar valve. That means it's a half moon shape, so like that. And there are three of these half moons and they close against each other like this. And um, so when the leaflets press together, that's how the valve is competent. And it's when they don't press together is when you, when you get a leak or aortic regurgitation. The causes of aortic regurgitation are anything that could disrupt that closure of those half moon valves. And so that could be a problem with the leaflets themselves. And perhaps one of the most common reasons are patients who are born with two of the leaflets slightly fused, and we call that a bicuspid valve, and that can uh, lead the patient to get a leaky valve. Or if the the ring of the valve, what we call the annulus, is pulled slightly apart, then those half moons come slightly apart and don't quite close uh, centrally and you can get a leak. And then anything that destroys the, the leaflets themselves, for example, an infection, uh, that could also cause aortic regurgitation. What are the symptoms of aortic regurgitation? A leaky valve results in the heart having to do more work because each time it beats, of course it expels all the blood, but then it, some of that blood comes back, so it's got to do extra work and the heart can compensate to a certain extent for having the leak. Um, and it does that by dilating a bit. It gets slightly more dilated. And initially, it actually works uh, more than, than normal. So the left ventricular ejection fraction, if you're having an echo, this is that percentage number that your doctor gives you, the EF, that number may actually go up. The heart's sort of working extra hard. There comes a point when the heart reaches the limit of its compensation and then you start to get symptoms. And those symptoms will be something like shortness of breath on exertion or perhaps even chest pain as the pressure in the heart goes up. And sometimes the stretch of the heart can cause arrhythmias. Arrhythmias are palpitations. That's when your heartbeat can be either very fast or irregular. Uh, so any of those are signs that you have aortic regurgitation. If you've had it for a, a little while, you may even get a damming of the blood behind the valve. And so you can retain fluid and uh, you can notice you may have swelling of your ankles or swelling in other places like your tummy. And now a big question I'm sure patients are wondering is, what are the risks to a patient's health from aortic regurgitation? Uh, yes, well, I, you know, I said initially that the heart can compensate for the aortic regurgitation, um, but there comes a point when it starts to, the, the, the muscle gets bigger, just like any muscle, but it uh, begins to scar up, so the heart muscle will get fibrosis, and once that starts to develop, the chance for you to recover that muscle by, say, having the valve repaired or replaced uh, is diminished and you're starting down a path towards heart failure. So, you know, the, the eventual result of untreated aortic regurgitation is heart failure. 
Dr. Katerina, we obviously want to help our patients prevent heart failure. So the big question I'm sure they're wondering is, what are the treatment options for aortic regurgitation? So aortic regurgitation is a mechanical problem. It really needs a mechanical solution, which means surgery. And there are two broad surgical options. I'll go through the standard option first, which is replacement of the valve. That's very widely practiced. There have been many hundreds of thousands of valve replacements for the aortic valve. And in valve replacement, really, there are two options. There's a mechanical valve. So this is a valve that's made of carbon fiber. It's extremely durable. It will last a whole lifetime, even if you put it in a young person. Um, but it's not so friendly on the bloodstream, so you need to take special tablets to thin your blood. Otherwise, you might form a clot on the, on the uh, aortic valve itself, and that clot could cause a stroke or malfunction of the valve. The tablets which we use are also, um, you know, they vary from patient to patient. Their effect varies, and so you need to have blood tests as well as taking the tablets. And that can be uh, an impediment to some people's lifestyle. So the alternative to a mechanical valve is a tissue valve. Mostly now we use um, cow uh, tissue valves. They're not cow valves. They're valves made with the lining of a cow's heart, which makes a very um, reproducible material that can be formed you know, in a factory and made into a three leaflet valve that looks very much like our native valves. It's on a, it comes on a strut and that strut is what the surgeon sews in place to do the replacement. It has the advantage that it's quite friendly on the bloodstream so you don't need to take blood thinners. However, it is a natural tissue and so it suffers wear and tear much like our native valves do and so its durability is limited compared to the mechanical valve. And typically I tell patients that it would last about 15 years, at which point it would need some other intervention. It could be repeat surgery, or it could be a transcatheter valve replacement. So I mentioned that there was an alternative, which is valve repair. So this is where you keep your own leaflets, but the surgeon uh, repairs them and so that they get rid of the leak. So earlier on I said that one of the ways in which the valve could leak is if those semilunar leaflets are not opposing because they've been pulled apart by a stretched ring and so the surgeon can tighten that ring, bring those leaflets back together so that they oppose and you don't get a leak. And then also I said that a big cause was fusion of two of the leaflets which disrupts the way they come together and there are some surgical techniques to lift up the valve, stop it prolapsing and get apposition back. And with those specialized techniques, we're able to preserve your native valve and that's a good thing because it's the most durable replacement and also it is not susceptible to infection because you have a foreign body in your bloodstream. Dr. Caterina, fascinating when you're talking about aortic valve repair, which is a form of reconstructing the valve. I'm curious to know, are there any other forms of replacement or re reconstruction that your team here at Cedars is helping patients with? Uh, yes, of course there is also the ROS procedure, and that is another way of keeping your own native valve. So there are two valves in your heart that have these semilunar leaflets the aortic valve, which in your case you have aortic regurgitation, so it's malfunctioning, but also the pulmonary valve. It's exactly the same structure as the aortic valve. So we could take the pulmonary valve out of its location and put it in the aortic position, and then we can put another valve in the pulmonary position. The advantage of that is that this, the pressures in the pulmonary circulation are much lower so the second valve in the pulmonary position will be more durable because of that. And we, we call that a ROS procedure. It's mostly done for patients who have a aortic stenosis, a narrowed aortic valve. And in the context of aortic regurgitation, the pulmonary valve, which is used to much lower pressures, has a tendency to dilate, to stretch over time. And so we have a technique here at Cedars, which is known as the supported ROS, 
where we put the pulmonary valve inside another conduit. Uh, it's made of a, it's a special medical grade polyester that goes around the outside of the pulmonary valve and just allows it to maintain its structure now in the systemic circulation with a higher pressure. Dr. Caterino, I love all the innovation that the folks here at Cedars are using to help these patients with aortic regurgitation. What is my life expectancy for a procedure that is trying to make my aortic valve that's regurgitant normal? So I have very good news for you, is that we can bring patients' life expectancy back up to the normal expected for their age uh, with any of these procedures, whether it's repair, repair with aneurysm uh, correction, or indeed replacement. Wow. Well, Dr. Caterino, on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks so much for the work that you and your team are doing here at Cedar sinai to help patients with aortic regurgitation. Thanks so much for being with me today. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about this. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.